Welcome back, everybody. Let's take a break with Steven. Steven Seamus. Alex, good to see you, my friend. Always a pleasure to see you, sir. You got the Bill Belichick hoodie on today, looks yeah, like? Yeah, I should, I should cut off the sleeves and put my, my, <laughs> my hoodie up. Cut off the sleeves. I do play football uh, in sleeveless hoodies. I, mean, that's, that's, I, I, feels I don't even know. Where did he even come up with the sleeveless for, hoodie? For range of motion? I don't know. What's he doing? Is he throwing the football in the, in the morning like to warm it's up? Such an, it's such an odd look that it's like almost inexplicable. He was like, what, what crazy look could I come up with that makes any sense? I mean, it's like, it's like a vest, right? You want the warmth on your chest, but your arms are not are out. So why not just wear a vest? Like you're Bill Belichick. You'd be like, Hey, New England Patriots, build me a New England Patriots vest. That's what I want to wear. And they would have done it. Yeah. I don't know. The fact that he cuts them. And Do you think he cuts is... them or does an assistant cut them? <laughs> I don't know. That's funny though. <laughs> All right, Alex, what do we got today? Yeah, we're going to we're going to go in some some weird Marvel routes because there's some books are going really crazy in, in prices. Uh, we're going to talk about Adam uh, Legend of the Blue Marvel, Blue Marvel, which is not an old character. Uh, we're going to talk about White Rabbit, which is kind of an old character. Um, we're going to talk more in depth about Invincible because the cartoon's coming. It's an Amazon. And if it's anything like the boys, I mean, if you get half of what the boys are doing, it's going to be a hit. You need to be better. After everything he's done, how can I live up to all that? You need to decide what kind of hero you want to be. That was you. So we got some fun things to talk about today. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, look, we try to be creative here. We try to look for the things that people aren't necessarily thinking about. Right. And then I think that once we bring them to light, you're going to be like, wow, like, I didn't know that. I didn't see that. It's pretty awesome. Pretty cool. So, uh, you know, that look, we try to educate here. We try to look, there's some things that are obvious that we have to talk about. You know, when we talk about, you know, the Venoms and the Spider-Mans and the 300s and all those other kind of things. And we dig up a lot of stuff that people aren't necessarily top of mind. And then you'll, you'll thank me later. I mean, if you've been following the show since the beginning and you've picked up on a lot of the stuff that we've talked about, the prices have skyrocketed on yeah. this stuff. I helped, so, a, I helped okay. a buddy who owns a comic book store. And he's like, oh, someone donated a bunch of books. Go in there and see if there's anything there. I found a Mace Windu number five. That's an $80 book. I found a Darth Vader number three. I found, you know, I'm just like finding like, yeah, this is worth money. This is worth money. This is worth money. And it's, you know, it, it's like I that know. It's, cra it's crazy. It's crazy. All right, Alex, what do you got up first today? Yeah, let's talk Invincible. That show looks amazing. Yeah, so, so this book has been around... Uh, since 2003 mm -hmm. so it's been around for 17 years there's always been a lot of talk about it being a film being a tv show being a movie why don't you talk a little bit about invincible and its 17 year journey or 18 year journey mm -hmm. from its beginnings to to where it is today and what the story is about yeah i mean when you talk about invincible and walking dead and robert kirkman this is his i think two main books these are the two big books that kind of skyrocketed him from, you know, just an indie creator to who he is now with everything. Um, Invincible is a superhero book, a la Spider-Man, a teenager who has powers and trying to like go through life and, you know, deal with, you know, stuff that's happening. But by issue five, and we'll talk about five and six and, 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 the, and the, during the, the series takes a complete 180 and it, it turns into something else that the whole series kind of deals with his father being a superhero and what he did. And just to let you guys know, this is going to be a spoiler, spoiler filled episode. The first 10 issues, there's some stuff in there that's going to be spoiler filled. If you don't, if you don't want to, uh, you know, know those heads up, but there's some stuff that goes on in those books that when it, as it progressed, it got bigger and bigger and the more world building he did, uh, you know, he did end it. It's over. So if you want all the trades, go out and get them before the cartoon, be, you know, kind of learn up on stuff. Uh, but it's a great book. What what differentiates, you know, you know, sometimes people ask like, oh, what's the difference between this one and this one? Like, OK, Invincible, you know, they're making it into an animated show. What 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 was so unique about Invincible as a property that lends itself to an animated show versus a TV or a film? And what's different about it? I definitely think the art, uh, the Ryan Otley art uh, throughout the, the series, 
very cartoony, very, I, I don't want to say simplistic, but it is, it's, it's a very simple type of art, um, which, I mean, turning that into animation is beautiful. I mean, you can do a live action, but I think a lot of stuff isn't going to translate. The, the costumes are, might not translate well. There's a lot of aliens and outer space stuff that might not translate well. It's also a very gory book. It is very adult superhero. Um, and that's kind of hard to do when there's twists and turns in like a movie or a TV show and you have so much, so much story there. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned the boys earlier because I agree with, I agree with the, the simple line art. Sometimes simple line art can be very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the greatest cartoonists of all time is Charles Schultz. Yep. Uh, it's very simple line art. Yep. Uh, it, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot there, but think about the career of Charles Schultz and Peanuts yeah. with that very simple line art. And the boys also, yeah. when you look at Derek Robertson's line art, he doesn't try to throw too much in there at yeah. it. He gives you very simple line art and it can be very power. It's amazing, right? Sometimes yeah. you do simple and it's more powerful. And you look at the boys, which is an extremely, extremely successful book. And they use very simple line art in the book yeah. and it works perfectly. That's, that's that when you have a master book. artist. That's a master artist. Someone that can take something and do simple, you know, like not over the top, not super detailed drawings and make you feel things from them. Yeah. You know, you know, I own a couple of pages from the boys and when you see the original art, you're like, wow, like he, he does very simple line art, but it's very impactful within just a few lines. That's hard yeah. to do. Yeah. It's hard to do. Okay, so let's talk about Invincible number one, January of 2003. Uh, there are 277 blue label 9.8s, decent size pop, mm -hmm. 43 gold label 9.8s. It's a $2,500 book today, yeah. probably going up because of the film, uh, because of the animated show. Yeah. First appearance of Invincible and Omni Man. You know, every character in this book that was you know, introduced the, the huge cast all has a big part in the, the whole series. I think it almost rained about 200 issues too. So it was a very long run. Right, right. Okay. And then there's also a Larry's Wonderful World of Comics limited edition mm -hmm. uh, to number one. Uh, that is, there are 253 blue label 9.8s. There are 70 gold label 9.8s. Interestingly enough, despite the same, uh, you know, blue label, gold label census, basically, it's only a $250 book. Mm -hmm. uh, there are eight blue label 99s, two gold label 99s. There's actually one 10.0. Again, I think it goes back to the fact that we talked about before is when one store gets a large volume, it's hard for that book to take off simply because uh, most of the books are high quality and they're, yeah. they're unpacked by the, by the one retailer. Uh, that, that takes us to Invincible number two, comes out a month later. There are 150 blue label 9.8s. There are 10 gold label 9.8s. That's about a $575 book. Yeah. A lot of first appearances in there. Yeah. First Robot, Rexplode, Adam Eve, and Duplicate. Talk mm -hmm. about those characters a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Invincible, again, is a teenage superhero. So these characters, Robot, Rexplode, Adam Eve, Duplicate, this is kind of like the, they're like the teen versions of superheroes. You know, th these, these guys were already heroes. But this is this is Invincible's Justice League. These characters, these are the people that he eventually throughout the series holds close to, close to home. He eventually starts dating Adam Eve. So you know, there's a lot. These characters are definitely major characters in this series, right? And 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 just to make a point here is we're not sure what role in the animated series right. because obviously if one of these characters has a more major role or becomes more popular, you know, you could start to see these first appearance books fluctuate based on that yeah i mean look at the the, the spider gwen stuff i mean that stuff was hot but it wasn't until into the spider verse and then it blew up went crazy because oh she was God. a great character you know all of them yeah. spider-man noir yeah uh you know you had uh spider-man 2099 yep yep you had uh spider ham yeah i mean you couldn't give those books away and all of a sudden it's like people want peter porker spider ham yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean it was crazy right okay um, so then it leads us to Invincible number three, which is also a big book. There's no first appearances in there. March of 2003, 60s. Now, again, you're starting to see the, the census go down because the print runs are going down. Right. There are 66 blue label 9.8s. There are full, five gold label 9.8s. That's about a $350 book. And then you kind of jump to issue number five. Mm -hmm. Now, issue number five, and we're going to start to get into some first appearances after this. Issue number five, uh, June of 2003, 
43 blue label 9.8s, four gold label 9.8s. The census is getting lower. $750 book. First, Alan the Alien. Let's talk about Alan the Alien. Yeah, Al Alan's a character in the book that is, you know, he comes to Earth he comes to earth to kind of take over him and invincible talk about his dad for years has been fighting Alan to, for him, like fighting in space to be like, you can't take over the earth. They fight. The dad wins. Alan goes away. He gets stronger, heals, comes back and does it again. They do that over and over and over again for years. And invincible goes out and he just talks to him. He's like, Hey, this plant's really cool. Maybe you shouldn't destroy it. We could just be friends. And he's like, Oh, okay. And then Alan is one of his, you know, you know, best friends throughout the whole series, all the way to the end. Again, if that if that continues through the animated, that could be a big book too. And I think that's and then, Alan Tudyk does the voice, I believe. So I mean, obviously, it's going to be a great character. Alan's great on Doom Patrol, also, by the way. He's, He's great on uh, Resident Alien, which just came yeah, out I knew, yeah. You know, I, I've fun. been meaning to watch that. It looks it looks pretty good. It's you know, fun. He's all he's kind of all over the place a little bit. I like him. He's good. Okay, and then it leads you to Invincible number seven, uh, uh, December of 2003, 13 blue label 9.8s, two gold label 9.8s, super low pop, $500 right now. Could could be a book that to watch, could be a book to buy in raw. First dad turns, talk about that a little bit. All right, first thing, spoiler alert, guys, but this is the book. I think this is a very undervalued book at $500. There's not a lot of 9.8s out there. I think you should buy all the raws right now. His dad turns out to be a villain and kills the Justice League of the Invincible Universe. And Invincible has to fight him. He gets beat up a lot. I mean, this is this is the point of the book where it turns into something completely different. And the whole series is based on this one issue. And I think when this episode comes out on the animated series, if it's a popular series, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be, this is the book that's going to go bananas this is gonna right, be heard it here first yeah i'm here first yeah, this is this is cheap right now great and now we're going to jump to you know some other collectible issues of invincible you know after the the first few main issues uh there's the invincible number 100 comicsology ryan otley sketch cover uh january of 2013 uh 25 blue label 9.8 eight gold label 9.8 that's about a 1300 dollars book uh, that was exclusive to Comixology. Mm -hmm. uh, that one has the blue logo on it there because there's two different Ryan Otley sketch covers. Mm -hmm. So the blue logo one uh, with with Invincible on the cover. And then there's an Invincible number 100 with a Comixology Ryan Otley sketch cover, which is all black and white. It does not have Invincible on the cover. And that's about a thousand dollar book. Uh, 55 blue label 9.8s, 17 gold label 9.8s. Obviously, those are rare because you had to buy them from Comixology. And, yeah. and at the time, people weren't thinking about, you know, ordering that book necessarily. It's just yeah. hard to find. So so that's that one. And then the Skybound fifth anniversary book of Invincible number one, uh, July 2015. Uh, 49 blue label 9.8s, 24 gold label 9.8s. That's about a $275 book. And then there's a blue line variant. Uh, 33 blue label 9.8s, 16 gold label 9.8s, one blue label 9.9. That book sells for about 250 bucks in 9.8. So those are low pop books to kind of keep an eye on. Yeah. The Invincible 100s are short print books, uh, but really one, two, three, five, and seven yeah, are big really big. the books. One is very expensive, but listen to Alex, man. Number seven is, is where it's at. I think it is. All right, cool. All right, what do we got up next? Yeah, let's talk uh, Adam, Legend of the Blue Marvel miniseries. Okay. Alex, I have to admit, <laughs> I, I didn't know anything about uh, this Adam Blue series. Mm -hmm. I looked it up. It's very, I'm very confused. Uh, you'll have to shed some light. The prices on the raw books, the prices on the graded books are crazy. And even the trade paperback, yeah. which never really because they're reprints they never really appreciate in value maybe it was just one run and done and they don't print it anymore yeah. the first printing uh what is going on with this adam yeah i mean just the character the, the character is a new character it's 2008 right or 2009 and the character is a brand new character in the marvel universe who's been there for a very long time and you'll see this with a couple other characters they've done this before with century um and characters like that but you know adam brashear who is if you want, you can say he's Superman like in the Marvel Universe. He is super strong. Some, you know, in the books and in the subsequent like Avengers books, 
a lot of people think that he's stronger than the Hulk. Thor, he's he's the strongest person in the Marvel Universe. He beat he knocked Sentry out. Um, and this is a character that you know was a character in the Marvel Universe in the 60s. He had a mask, he was a blue Marvel. The government knew he was African American, and then they eventually asked him to stop being a superhero because it was the 1960s and America's got a dark past. <laughs> I mean, that's mm-hmm. what the series is about. But you're right. I mean, these were this was a mini series that nobody thought was going to be a hit and nobody really ordered it because again this is this was a series that were like hey the series is coming out with all these characters you've never heard of so it's, it's tough for like spider-man and, and x-men guys to just pick up something like that you know and again you'll see it later when we if we ever talk about the century books same thing nobody nobody when new heroes come out and their first appearance is their own book it's tough for that to sell yeah, but I mean, but why now? I mean, is it because of the zeitgeist? Is it just the timing? I of- think so. And I, I think, you know, if you look at the MCU, what was one of the biggest movies of the last seven years? Black Panther. You know, why is that? Because it talked to more than just your Marvel people. It was big. This is a good character for them to use in the MCU and more comics and in any form, really. And I think it's I think people understand that this is probably going to be something that they're gonna they're gonna show. I mean, with the MCU, with the TV shows, and you can see with WandaVision, nothing is off the table. Literally nothing, unless another company owns the the characters, like with uh when Fantastic Four was in with a Fox or with Spider-Man with the Sony. But you can even see them being folded into the Marvel Universe now. So nothing is off the table. And I think people are just speculating these books are going to be something. And the, the print runs make sense though. These books are on fire. Yeah. Okay, let's get to it. Yep. January of 2009, Adam, Legend of the Blue Marvel, number one. By the way, what's also interesting about these books is because they weren't like highly anticipated books, mm-hmm. they didn't do a lot of variants on these books also, yeah. which probably the retailers were not ordering them in large quantities. Right. Look, if you have a one in 10 variant or a one in 25 variant or one in 100 variant and you're a store, and you were going to order 85 copies. You say, ah, you know what? I'll order 100. I'll get the variant. Right. You were going to order eight copies. You'd be like, all right, I'll order 10. I'll get the variant. If I, yeah. you were going to order 22 copies, you say, ah, I'll order 25. Without any variant incentives, people just kind of ordered what they needed. I, a lot of these books, especially books like this, it's unless some – and stores you know, order very close to what they need. They don't want to order 100 copies of something and sell two and be completely stuck with these books and not have anything to do with them. So a lot of times, mini series like this, they'll order just for their, sub, their subscription customers, which might be four people asking for it. So they'll order five. I, right. I mean, if you if you looked in the catalog, I, I can't imagine people like, yeah, order that for me. Yeah. Right? yeah. Were, were you at Midtown at the time? Uh, I was, I was at Midtown. Do you remember, do you remember that book? I remember it coming out and I think they ordered a decent amount. I didn't pick it up and read it. I wasn't reading a lot of Marvel stuff at that time, but I mean, it was just one of those things where I was like, oh, that's neat. And you know, moved on. Right. Okay. So issue number one, January of 2009, uh, there are 182, uh, blue label 9.8s. There are zero gold label 9.8s. There's one 9.9. Uh, I'm going to talk about 9.6s and 9.4s because of the values. There are 163 blue label 9.6s, zero gold labels. There are 77 blue label 9.4s and zero gold labels. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hope you're sitting down. The book is about a $1,300 book in 9.8. That's bananas. It's about a $600 book in 9.6. It's about a $425 book in 9.4. And it's about $340 raw. Yeah. Okay. There were we 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 can go back a little bit, and if you look at the sales charts, we estimate there were about seventeen thousand copies printed, which for a Marvel book is extraordinary low. Wait till we get the issue, the the following issues. Independence or higher. Right, and that's the first Blue Marvel and Anti Man. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we know that that was a very very low print run book. And now when we get to the second, third, and fourth books, you're going to see why the raw books are selling so much because you're going to try to put a set together. Right. Uh, and it's very, very difficult. You know, it's something that we discussed with that with the book Ball and Chain not too long ago, right. becoming the Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie is putting a set together of one through four is extremely difficult. We spoke I spoke to Ali Garza. He's like, I think by issue four, we only printed a few thousand copies. And it's like it's a 21 year old book. This book isn't 21 years old, but it is 12 years old. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're trying to find issue number four with a with a 7000 print run trying to get 9.8s. Forget it. I mean, these yeah. books are probably in dollar boxes somewhere. Right. Yeah. Definitely, 100%. And, and I will say this, is that without the, with, the, with the lack of shows, 
you know, a lot of dealers might have their inventory sitting in a warehouse right now. And it's not like Adam Legend of the Blue Marvel is like, oh, I know where that book is sitting in the box. Like, you know, a lot of times these dollar boxes and, and you know, those 50 cent boxes, yeah, Alex, totally. it's just a mishmash of stuff. Yeah, it's not like throw it in. Order. There's nothing in They just yeah. throw it in there. So, you know, if you're a dealer and you have 300 monster boxes, like you don't know where that book is sitting in there. Yeah. And because you're not doing shows every weekend, you don't necessarily have access to it. So a lot of this stuff could be sitting in a warehouse. Okay. Uh, issue number two came out in February of 2009. 17 blue label 9.8s, one gold label 9.8. It's about a $400 book in 9.8. 75 to $100 raw. About 12,000 printed. Yep. Okay. Issue number three, March of 2009. 18 blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s. It's about a $350 book, also 75 to $100 raw. Alex, you know 75 to 100 raw is tough. It's big. That's a big number. Yeah. Okay. Uh, April uh, 2009, issue number four, eight, bl eight blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s. Good luck. Print run of approximately 9,700, 75 to $100 raw. Issue number five, May of 2009, nine blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s. Last 9.8 sold for $500. Oof. It's a $75 to $100 raw book, approximately $9,500. And here's something you don't see every day. The trade paperback yeah. is print. selling for $200. Yeah, that's, cr that's crazy. We never, we, I, no. I, I, don't, I can't remember the last trade paper. Like, I can't even think of a trade paperback that's like worth, worth money. Now, maybe the first like printing of Dark Knight. Maybe the first printing not even of that. Watchmen. I, not even that. Even there's there's a, a leather bound Dark Knight, which is one of the first printings. It's worth like 50, 60 bucks. But I mean, that's the cover price. The cover price was like $40. Wow. But wow, no, trade paperbacks crazy. do not go up high like this. All right. So you heard it here first. If you can find raw copies. And I'm telling you, you know, there's 75 to $100 on eBay. But again, you might be able to walk into a store and buy that book. And in an unknowing retailer might have that book in a dollar bin or yeah. cover price bin or whatever. So always got to dig and get a look. Yeah. You heard it here first. All right. We come to the favorite time of the show. Let's go. Alex's pick of the week. Alex, what do you got for us? Uh... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a broken record uh, this week because Star I Star Wars Star Wars and Star Wars cards and we've talked about this so much. I just want to point out one specific card that is right now going for nineteen hundred and seventy five dollars, one thousand nine hundred and seventy five dollars. Wow, what is that on eBay? With four more, two more days to go, it is a twenty twenty top Star Wars masterworks, Pedro Pascal. Uh, Nick Nolte and Takia Watiti signed card, triple signed card, almost two thousand dollars with with fourteen bids and two days to go. This is what yeah, the card well, industry is doing right now. Well, Watiti is also the director of uh, Thor, which yeah. is what. Uh, and, and, and Nick Nolte's. Way, I mean, how many Nick Nolte autographs are in the world? What what a voice, right? It sounds like he swallowed some gravel. It's perfect. I, th this is what the card industry is doing right now. And those boxes, just for just 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 to think about it, the 2020 Masterworks boxes just came out about, I say about a month and a half, two months ago. Retail, they were 225 bucks. You can't buy one less than $400 right now. Yeah, the whole card market is totally insane. We've talked about that already. Mm -hmm. well, all those Marvel Metal boxes we told you to buy are over $1,000 a box now. <laughs> if you didn't buy it when we told you to, you're out of luck. Unless out you want to spend some money. Yep. Correct, correct. All right, what are we closing with today, Alex? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about my favorite uh, F villain. She's not my favorite. I I wouldn't even I wouldn't even know about her unless be, it, only because Marvel Legends did a figure of her just recently. Uh, White Rabbit. This character's on fire. Uh, came out of nowhere. Uh, this book. I looked up some uh, historical data on this book about uh, a year ago. You could have bought a nine point eight version of her first appearance for anywhere from 60 to a hundred dollars. <laughs> and the only reason why it was that price was because you just had a low census on the book. Mm -hmm. uh, as we talk about this character now and where it's come from, where she's come from and where she is, um, basically she, she is in the new Absolute Carnage Symbiote Spider-Man mini series. I'll talk to you about how we even discovered it and then started investigating the pricing on it. So uh, let's just talk about the first issue and then we'll have you talk about the character a little bit. 
-hmm. So White Rabbit first appeared in July of 1983 in Marvel Team Up number 131. Interesting note, in a VF near mint kind of raw condition, you could still buy this book for 25 or 30 bucks. Uh, you know, that's an 8085-9092 kind of condition. Uh, it's good buy, it's a good speculation. Um, it's a great cover. It's one of those covers that really prominently features the character. Mm -hmm. uh, 9.8, very low census. Uh, 24 blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s. It's the last few have sold for about $1,100. And that's what they're asking, eleven dollars to $1,200 for this book. Yeah. Uh, the character now appeals, appears in the new absolute carnage. Why don't you talk about the White Rabbit? And, and this book, like I said, came out of absolutely nowhere for this for this new absolute carnage i think you're going to see a lot of this in the, in the speculator market and, and again with the adam the blue, blue marvel as well look at the numbers you just said it. 24 9.8 a first appearance of a character who's been in the comics i mean she's not a, 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 a an a-list villain or a b or a c or a d she pops in and out all the time but she's been around for a while this is a first appearance of a character and like you said She's now in the absolute carnage stuff, and you never know how much of a, a D or an E character can rise up to a B. Look at the calculator with DC and how they moved him from a nothing villain to a big villain. Dr. Light with, with an infinite uh, identity crisis. Um, you know, and her, her uh, uh, Lorna Dodson, is just not, she's not like super powered. She's, she's almost like a bad Batman. She's super rich. She knows karate, and she has a bunch of like tech like umbrellas is her thing, kind of like the penguin. She's got a lot of mutated rabbits. So she's not, it's not exactly like, oh, she, you know, Spider-Man kicked her in a, into a vat of liquid and she became white rabbit. She was just bored and decided to become a villain. And the, the cover is great because it's the inside the book. It's Spider-Man and Frogman, Frogman as the hero fighting white rabbit. So it's a picture, you know, the picture of Spider-Man's head on the wall and Frogman's head on the wall. It's a great cover. It's a great cover. Yeah. So great guy, and I think that's part of the the attraction to it. Yeah. Um, so then she appears again, another great undervalued book if you're looking for something. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man number two fifty six, uh, April of nineteen ninety eight. There are three blue label nine point eight, only one gold label nine point eight. Uh, the last one sold for sixty bucks, like I told you, but the next one's going to sell for a lot more. It's a great white rabbit cover. Um, and again, we saw the same thing happen with Madam Web, you know, yeah. when that was enough in character, nobody had heard of it. They announced she's going to be in the films. And then the, the book went up 15 to 20 times. That's what happened here. Yeah. And by the way, the character has a good look to it. And I, yeah. I, I agree it's with sleek. you. I think they might use her somewhere. Yeah. It's a fun. It's, oh. it's, a, it's a it's a great design. It's like a cross between like, you know, Zatanna's costume and like the, the Playboy bunny costumes from the 60s. And and, you know, she's got an umbrella. Yeah, she's fun. Yeah, so, so the reason why I discovered it is I was looking through the, the new Absolute Carnage Symbiote Spider-Man number one. I was looking through it, I was reading it, and, and all of a sudden I saw White Rabbit in there. I was like, oh, that's an interesting villain. And then I went to eBay to start looking it up or I went to Google it, and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe the pricing. I mean, it was like, whoosh, like overnight. Now I had waited a few days. I mean, if you were smart and you read that book early, you would have detected it. So that's yeah. how we kind of detected it. So Absolute Carnage, Symbiote Spider-Man number one, Greg Land cover. Came out in November of 2019, three blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s. There are no, no reported sales on it. Uh, there's not going to be any reported sales on most of these simply because the pops are so low on the census. Uh, so these are books that you're going to want to go out and get raw. These probably, these are not in low supply because it's an absolute carnage number one. So they definitely made these. Yeah. But I think the second prints and some of the short print ones are going to be the ones you're going to want to look on, uh, look up. Uh, Absolute Carnage, Symbiote, Spider-Man number one, Greg Land Codex, one in 25 variant cover, four blue label 9.8s, one gold label 9.8. Uh, number one, the Mike Hawthorne, one in 50 variant cover. There's only one blue label 9.8, zero gold label 9.8s. The Mike Hawthorne, one in 100 virgin cover, nine blue label 9.8, zero gold label 9.8s. Then the second print, which is the one to get, there's that one selling for $30 raw, which wow. means you know when somebody puts it in 9.8, there are zero pop, zero blue 9.8, zero gold 9.8. That's the Francesco Mobili cover. And what happened was I, I, I really, really liked his art. And I went to go look up his work. 
And that's what turned me on to the series because I was, I, I, I was like, oh, he's, I really, really like his work. And I went to go check it out. And that's when I discovered this. So you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> uh, the really, really cool cover in all this is the absolute carnage uh, Spider-Man number one with the Mike Mayhew cover. They did an homage to Spider-Man number 238 where he's sort of tearing the Hobgoblin. Right. Uh, yeah, 74 blue label 9.8s, oh, seven gold label 9.8s. It's a 20 to $30 book raw. They only made 1,500 of those. That's kind of the, that's one of the books I'd be buying. Uh, the second one is the virgin cover of that. There are 79 blue label 9.8s. There are 92 gold label 9.8s. That book is also 20 to $30 raw, 600 print run, Alex, six zero zero. 20 to 30 raw, that's a buy. That's a huge buy, yeah. That's a huge Pick buy. It up. Right, and then the last one is the New York Comic Con Mayhem, Mike Mayhew cover. Uh, it's the same uh, cover as the Comic Mint cover that we just talked about, which is the Mike Mayhew cover. Uh, they have like a little different trade logo and stuff on the cover, mm -hmm. so it's almost identical. Uh, that book, there are 14 blue label 9.8s. There are two gold label 9.8s. And that's about a 20 to $30 book raw. So I think that there's definitely some buys in these absolute carnage. I would absolutely look at the white rabbits. I would look at if, you know, if you, if you do, if obviously if you can't find a 9.8, it's a black cover, they chip easily. They, they, the spine ticks easily. Uh, but if you get a nice grade copy and you can pay 15, 20, $25, I think you'd be very happy. I don't think you can go yeah. wrong. You know, you, you know, 25, $30 for these books. You, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Fantastic covers. All right, cool. All right. I think that does it for this week, Alex. Another great show. Another great Always. episode. Always. Great. Every show. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So if you have any comments, questions, whatever, you think we missed anything, you want us to talk about anything, leave it in the comments below. And uh, we will see everybody next week. Same bat time. Same bat channel. See you later, guys.